This is uh, www.cloudfoundry.com. This is the main interface to the cloudfoundry.com and micro cloud foundry services. The first step is signing up. Pretty easy. Is put your all you need to do is provide us with your email and accept the terms of service. And you guys, since you are on the webinar, you can use the promotion code and get instantly approved. Once you have your uh, applicate your password uh, in your email, the first step you probably want to do is install the VMC command line tool, which is as simple as doing gem install VMC. It's a Ruby client, so if, if you're using a Mac, you don't have to do anything. If you're using uh, Windows, you want to install you want to install Ruby. Again, very simple. Once you've done that, you're doing VMC target. A very important command we'll see several times during the demo to your cloudfoundry.com account, and you change your password. So basically, you're doing VMC password, and you change your password. I'm quite quite happy with my password, so we'll leave it at that. The next step is since we want to use MicroCloud. We're going to download MicroCloud using that link. You use the same email and password that uh, you have for your cloudfoundry.com account. You log in and you download your machine, your, your VM. It's basically a VMX file that you can open either with Fusion or Player. In this case, I've opened it with Fusion. So what I have here, once I install it with a few simple steps, is you know this interface. And what I'm going to show you in this example is actually the offline version of MicroCloud, so uh, also something we released a few weeks ago. So uh, you can actually ro work on this uh, in, in a plane or without any network connection. So it's completely offline, um, and you don't have to have any Internet connection. So the second step is um, what I want to show you. When you're running MicroCloud, you probably want to um, – disable some of your services if you don't have a lot of uh, horsepower on your local Mac. So I've just disabled Mongo and Rabbit in this example because I'm not going to use them in the demo. And now I'm ready to go and start deploying stuff. So this is the first tool, the first developer tool for um, Cloud Foundry, the Spring Source tool suite. I'm going to deploy a, a simple uh, the bookstore app first on my microcloud. So I'm connecting to my microcloud. I'll do this very quickly because we're kind of getting short on time. Um, so I'll, I'll provide the same email that I've logged in with. This is my demo account. I'm going to choose the Cloud Foundry offline tool. Typo. Gmail. Yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, Okay, let's try the password again. Okay, now we're good. And we'll do the same thing for cloudfoundry.com. Choosing a different cloud. You see, this time I'm going to choose cloudfoundry.com. And in this example, I'm using the same email addresses, the same account. Obviously, I can configure different accounts for my micro cloud if I want. So now I'm connected to both clouds. Now, this is how simple it is to deploy an app with Cloud Foundry. You just drag and drop your application from the project tree to your micro cloud. I'm not going to start this at the moment. You'll see in a minute why. So, and that's it. My app is here. That's all I had to do. I haven't started anything. I uh, haven't deployed any middleware component. Now, what I'm going to do, what is a bookstore without books? I'm actually going to add a book service. Let's call it uh, BooksDB. I'm going to see, you remember that we have a several types of database services available. I'm going to select MySQL, and I'm going to bind it. So if you recall the first slide, we said how simple it is to deploy applications. So we did drag and drop for the app, didn't wire any middleware. Now we have a database. We didn't start a database. We, we actually not even uh, configured the tables for that database because in the case of Spring, what we are doing, we are reading your, if some of you on the call are Spring developers, we are actually reading the meta in for the manifest 
file within the Spring project and creating your uh, database tables. So you don't even have to do that. And once you are deployed, and, and by the way, this is all running here locally on my Mac with, the, with my SQL and everything. So I'm going to go to books.csmicro.offline. And if all works, you, you will see my, my book application running here locally on my microcloud. And we'll be able to add books. So let's give it a minute or two. It should be up and running. Yep, here we go. Again, this is all running locally, so it's up to my uh, Mac. So let's create two new books and then show you how we just move the application somewhere else. Just two new books and is available in stock. So you see, the, the, look at the, there is the, this is based on the roof framework for UI, but this is a complete website with database and web servers and app servers and, and routing and load balancing. And all you've seen me do is drag and drop from the project tree to Cloud Foundry uh, to MicroCloud. So I haven't had to do any of those uh, stuff in the back end. I basically could focus on my business logic. And second book, and now you can see the books and you get, you get the picture. Now, the cool thing is I can take the same application now and actually run it on cloudfoundry.com. So again, the same story. And I'm going to call it Books uh, March because this is now running publicly, so uh, we want to make sure nobody got the URL. I'm not going to start this either, and this time I'm actually going to bind it to a different database. Remember last time we bind it into a MySQL database. This time, let's say this is my production database, and I'm using vFabric Postgres. So not only that I'm, I'm not changing any bits in my code, I'm not configuring anything, and remember, now I'm moving between, I'm moving between a private cloud and a public cloud, from my laptop to you know, cloudfoundry.com. Again, the same story. I'm drag dropping the, the service. I'm starting the application. I'm actually going to scale it to two instances. Let's say this is a production app and I want to have more than one instance. So think about what you know, what you see now. You build your app locally with all the services together and everything is working and you were able to test it. And now you want to move it to a public cloud and that can be cloudfoundry.com, it can be the AppFall cloud, it can be the Active State cloud, um, it can be any Cloud Foundry partner cloud. And you just drag and drop it to a public environment and you're not re-architecting your code and you can actually use different services. So that's pretty cool. So if you and just to make sure you do believe me, now we will we'll go and we do books dot cloud foundry. So it's books March, right? Dot cloud foundry dot com. Now you will be able to see the same book application running on the public cloud. No changes. So uh we have about uh three minutes left. What one thing I want to show you is uh if we'll go back to the command line, um and we'll do uh, VMC target back to my uh, micro cloud. So api.csmicro.offline. So now I'm, I'm showing you a little bit the uh, command line tool. And we'll do VMC apps. You should be able to see the application that we had in the services. So here's the application books, and here is the services books to be. Now I want to show you a new feature we announced late, uh, recently, which is called Tunnel. So I'm going to do VMC Tunnel. And I'm going, it asked me to which tunnel basically allows me to actually access the services that I'm running and directly do a SQL query, for example. So it asked me to which service to bind, and I'm, that's the books DB1. And it asked me to create a password. It's binding the service, by the way, it's based, the name is based on the Caldecott tunnel in San Francisco. So that's kind of the feature behind this. 
So we're actually starting an application and binding to your books database with your own password, obviously. And now I can e even start a MySQL client that I have here. And I'm going to do select star from books. I hope that's the name of the table. Yep. And you see those are the two books that I have. So the point of this is that I can actually from moving from like this closed, uh, this path environment where everything was like, uh, you know, drag and drop and I, I kind of felt like I'm losing control. Very easily I can go and actually go into this, the service that I deployed and query with a simple SQL query and obviously I can do whatever I want here, updates, insert, whatever. It gives me the complete flexibility of what developers want. So, um, what I, uh, do we have uh, 30 minutes to do the note chat? What, where are we? Um, so, we have a few minutes, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. So let's, let's, let's so uh, we're going to run a little bit late on time, but I think it's worth it. So we're going to do the, uh, another simple, another cool application, this time using the Node framework and Redis. So, so far we demonstrated using Java Spring, MySQL, and Postgres. Now we're going to demonstrate a different framework Node.js, very popular framework to build uh, mobile and web applications, and a different service called Redis. All of that running on the same Cloud Foundry path, again, and in two clouds. Remember, choice of frameworks, choice of services, choice of clouds. So the first step is I'm going to go to where my um, application is. Just a minute. I'm going to deploy this. Um. Okay, here we are. So this is um, this is. Let's bring this back again. Up. Hope you can see the fonts better now. This is uh, based on the standard uh, Node chat sample app in the open source uh, repos. Um, and this is a, a, a Node application that I can, that can actually use a, red, uh, a service to um, store data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy this on my microcloud first. So it asks me if I want to deploy here. This is the equivalent of um, of the of the drag and drop command you've seen in the previous demo, it detects that this is a Node.js application. We'll just use the 64 and we'll say yes. We want to bind services, and we're going to use the Redis service. We're fine with the name. It's going to create the service and it's going to run the application. So basically, what we have now is a Node.js application running as a simple chat app locally here on my microcloud, bind into a Redis service. So if we just go to chat.cf micro offline, you can see the chat here. And hey, it's just me. Now, no worries. We're going to do the exact same thing now on cloudfoundry.com. So what do we have to do first? Target. We need to change our target back to cloudfoundry.com. So you see how I'm playing with this target command from one cloud to the other cloud without changing my application? That's the true promise of multi-cloud. That's the truth behind the slides. So VMC target, and I'm going to do the same push stuff here. And this time you will be able to you to participate with me in the chat. Um, so let's call it uh, march-chat. going to be on march.chat.cloudfoundry.com. Again, it detected this is a node.js application. We're going to bind the uh, same red, uh, the Redis service. It's going to create the service, and now my chat will be live in a few seconds. And I can actually now scale it to 100 instances if I want, and it will be very, very quick. So I can go to marchchat.cloudfoundry.com. Here we are 
live. Let's see if anyone is joined. Okay, hey, we have someone joined. Now uh, we can all chat. Great. So, um, again, same app, this time a different framework deployed on cloudfoundry.com. 